The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this 18th day of June. We're looking on this Tuesday, day before a holiday, coming up with uh, um, Juneteenth. Looking at 38,823, up 47. Well, what we're looking at is that the Dow has been one of the weaker links and has gone sideways. It did start an arch formation, but it held support. So we're going to be watching this very closely. The weight of evidence is suggesting that the, the digestive phase could continue. But how, wait a minute. So you've got the IWM. Look at this pattern. Lower lows and lower highs. Try to rally today. It didn't hold. Hey, we're not even 35 minutes into the session. But it's down 19 cents at 200.23. So when I see a, a trough A, then a B, and a C, and a D, and an E, and an F, just one after the other, going down in a very steady fashion, it says, be careful because you've used up a tremendous amount of downside energy, and at any point you could have a spike. So we've got to be ready for that. But let's put it into the context of everything else. If you're looking at the QQQ, the NDX 100 trading vehicle, it ran yesterday. I forgot to update this. I think it was 466.66. Let me just type that in, then I'll double check it. 6.66. That was the all-time high. Today is just under that. The high so far today is 485.68. Let me just check. 486. 8.6, not 6.6. And um, But it, we were looking at a potential leg D going to a peak D, and that's what we've got right now. But let's do this. Let's do the vertical analysis. And the vertical analysis says, forget about the weekly chart, which looks really strong, and the monthly chart. Even it's hard to believe, but the monthly chart has a 92% stochastic on balance volumes, a tad overbought but strong, and the MACD is good. So let's go to the daily. And the daily says that you're in leg D. The the, uh, nine, the price is way over the nine period moving average, which is at 474.79, which is way over the black 14 period exponential moving average, which is at 470, uh, 470 right now. The MACD is strong. The stochastics at 96% and flat. <clears throat> and the on, the on balance, the blue line, the on balance volume is somewhat overbought. And the relative strength is being tucked inside there. But it is strong. Okay, so all we're looking at here are strong technical indications. What would it take <clears throat> to see the QQQ drop under 469? That's, uh, what, 15, 16 points from here. Well, it would have to be some, some economic aspect that has the um, – it just has the connotation that – that was very ugly, and I don't like it because we have ugly right now at different points, and the market is just ignoring it like water off a duck's back. So all I can say is that that's what we, it would take. It would take something really sudden and uh, potentially longer-term acting. And we won't know that, but it has to have that imprimatur. It has to have that sense of... Um, Oh, this could get really ugly going over the next few weeks. We don't have that right now. Okay, let's look at the um, XLK. And uh, Tom O'Brien explained very carefully, and then Tommy O'Brien this morning also articulated that, about the, the differences with uh, NVIDIA and the percentages with Microsoft, etc., and how the, there has to be some kind of correlation, and therefore there's going to be some change coming up when, uh, I can't remember, was it the... End of the month could be the end of the month. So if that's the case, then XLK, at this particular point, you can only look at the lettering and say, well, wait a minute. It's either an F or a B. F says, oh, you've got to be a little careful. B says, are you kidding? Any kind of pullback, you want to be buying. Well, then you look at the weekly chart, and that is extremely strong. You look at the monthly charts in leg D already. So once again, what is it going to take? It's going to take some kind of... Um, an anomaly, some kind of, let's put it this way, 
some economic aspect that in this case it could be market related, stock related, that just has uh, the connotation that things can get really bad. I don't see anything here. I can see some kind of a, uh, some pullback. A pullback at 231 right now could go to 221, 219 even, but it's still in a very positive mode. So I just, I don't want to force anything. I'm just saying right now that's what we're looking at. Let's go to the... Um, IWM, the Russell 2000, and you can see it's really struggling. It's down nine ticks at this point at 200.33. Keeps making lower lows and lower highs, and the technicals are all confirming the, the weakness. So that's weak. But look at the, the weekly chart. It's just made an arch formation and it's still holding well. And the nine period moving average is holding well. So even if you're looking at the weakest link, it's still not that weak when you're looking at the weekly, and even the monthly is holding quite steady. Gosh, this is an incredible market. Now let's go to a couple of things that will make a difference. Let's go to Apple. So Apple's just been steadfast in its res resolute upward movement. It's trading down $1.33 today, $2.15.33. Made an all-time high a few days ago, $2.20. I think they hit $2.20. As I remember, it just missed it. It went to right here. Yeah, so it went to... 220.20. So it, did, it hit the round number and then went fractionally higher. And that's at a peak C, and it should go to a D. I, I can't call it anything else. So not being able to call it anything else takes me to this. So Microsoft has this technique that I call the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation. We were looking at it last week, uh, this time last week, and we were looking at it was over here, and it, was in, it made a peak D. And I said, oh, look at this pattern. It's got the, the long leg. It's made up of different uh, legs itself, but it's just a long, continuous move to the upside. And then it makes a definitive arch right here, an oval pattern, an arch at the top and a cup at the bottom, essentially making an oval pattern. And it goes on for a certain length of time. Usually it's a lengthy period. And then it suddenly pops to the upside, and we finally got that, and now it's in a leg E. And I drew this pattern right here, Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation. I discovered this way back in the when I was still hand charting, and uh, I found this particular technique. And it goes up, 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 up. Then it goes oval. It's got it can't be a rectangle. That's a different connotation. Oval, and it pops up to the neck. Neck doesn't you, you don't have a specific number because there are two patterns. One is where it just briefly makes the neck. And then it makes the beak. It looks like, just like a stalk standing on one leg. Um, and that beak comes down quite sharply. And then there's usually a very sharp rally, and then you're on your own. So we haven't even made the, the stalk leg, hasn't made the completion of the neck yet. So this is the neck, and this is Microsoft. And Microsoft is in the Dow. It's such a, I always talk about this. Dow, S&P, XLK, QQQ, um, AIQ. Where's the AIQ right now? That's uh, another uh, technical indicator. Yep, that went to its D. It had that uh, alternate count, and it went to the D yesterday. D today, all-time high. Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF at 3595. We are, we are, we've been long for a very long time, since 2023. Uh, now let's go back to Microsoft. Oh, before we finish up, the Dow's up 15, s and up 9. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So I just wanted to show you this. Remember, I, I like to do this every time I do my show. I discuss, well, not every time, but almost every time. I discuss the E-mini futures, and I discuss that from the close the previous day, it happens so often that the market then goes into a sideways trading band with a very narrow range. In this case, 54.72. I'm, I'm talking, um, this is a June contract. I've got the other one. I just haven't uh, got it in front of me. So that's at 54.72, and it goes to 54.90, right? I mean, that's a really small trading band, and it's still in that trading band, although it's starting to weaken a little bit. So within that context, I just want to say, keep that in mind. That's a pattern that you you can waste a lot of money trying to trade this pattern, thinking every time it's going to go to the top, it's going to break out. Instead, what happens, it stays in the narrow band like a little ping pong ball in this little glass tube game between the top and the bottom. Every time you think it's going to break down, it doesn't. And look at this, five minute finally hit. The 200 period moving average, and then it had a big spike after going to a PE. So I just wanted to go through that just to be consistent, to be able to talk about patterns that repeat. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention here <clears throat> is that with Microsoft, I don't really know how to take this count. There's no, I could call this a Chapman Wave in, uh, unconventional flat base restart, meaning that we're going to keep coming back down, but we haven't. And that would take make the four. 108 to 404 target over the next two weeks. I think that's going to be hit, but I don't think this way. So I'm going to call this a B. I have no choice. The new high today is 450.14. Uh, uh, no, 450.94 was yesterday's high. Today's is 450.14. So, so far, it looks like it is a B. So that makes sense because that says that there's enough upside impetus to be able to Maybe just pop a little bit higher. It doesn't mean that uh, Microsoft has to go very much further. Maybe the 453, 450, 455 level could even be the high over the next uh, three to five trading days. But I'm suspecting that this pattern is going to work and that at some point 
and it'll be together with the general market. There'll be a pullback, but then you've got the whole cushion of the oval. And that's the reason why I'm looking at this and saying, how will this conclude? And at this particular stage, let me uh, do uh, two things that I, I wanted to include here. Should I do it now? Yeah, so let me just do this. So you've got Amazon. Uh, Amazon right now is... Uh, un uh, just about unchanged down 30 cents at 183.72. Just stuck in a range. But look at that weekly, stuck in a range. It says we could be here for a while. When I say a while in a rectangle formation, it actually means a few weeks or many weeks, right? And, and that means it doesn't break out and hold above 192. It, it, that's kind of a cap. So I'm just watching this very closely. And it also says it's not breaking down at this particular point. Okay, I've got that out the way. I wanted to show you something else. Look here, here's the RTH. I did this yesterday and the other day. So um, good rally today. I think there it was up 0.01 or something like that. So fairly good news. This is the Van Eck retail ETF. It does have Amazon, which is 20%. Looks a little bit like Amazon, except this is moving a little bit better. This is the overall retail market. Look, 213.07 was the high way back in March of 2024. Way back. It's well in March of 2024. Um, that was an all-time high. And it pulled back to the 195 area. And now it's trading uh, up 44 cents at 207.20 in leg D. It's kind of, kind of convoluted, but it's a leg D. And leg B, a gray leg B in the weekly chart. It did make a peak B all-time high in the weekly chart. And it's a peak D all time high in the monthly. So this is darn good action. But wait a minute. Whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. The XRT is the spider SP retail. And that's not the uh, S P it's I think it's equal weighted, whatever it is, it's it's not. It doesn't have the influence of Amazon. And look at this. Is holding very nicely in a sideways consolidation. But the all time high was at a peak C way back in 2022. I think it was November, uh, October, November. November uh, at 104.31. I may as well put that in. 104.31. So even within a sector, we've got a divergence. And you can see that. I mean, look at this. You've got NVIDIA. NVIDIA screaming to the upside, all-time high yesterday, and today, 133.72. Yesterday's all-time high was um, 133.73. Yeah, we're two pennies away from a new all-time high. So, and look at and look at advanced micro devices. Look at that. It's coming down from its 227.30 high in, in March of this year. And it's trading at 155. Look at Intel. So I want to point out that their leadership is becoming a little bit, not a little, a lot more specific and very focused on fewer and fewer stocks. Although I must say, you've got quite a number in that whole area of the, um, I mean, look at this weekly chart of Intel. I mean, you would you'd say, is this a food stock? What, what is this? It doesn't look very good, right? All right. So you've got, let me just run these quickly, MU. All-time high as we speak, leg D at 156.71. Now, you remember all those round numbers that we were looking at? I have not seen any round numbers. This is, this is it has an intensity that's different to the last one. And that just says to me, it's an intensity that should see a repercussion for um, hubris, for thinking, oh, man, we can just buy this with Im impunity. It doesn't look to me like that's going to be the case. That's looking out a number of weeks. But on the short term, absolutely. Look at that. Uh, look at LRCX, LAM Research, uh, Leg E, all time highs. So I just wanted to show you that this is quite a diverse market, uh, but it's absolutely diverse in the whole general aspect of the market. Uh, let me, I haven't looked at this for a while. IYR, that's the REITs. Stuck in the higher range. Oh, man, I, saw, I had this all noted, notated. It's not now. Anyway, that's not a point. Point is the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart at 88.58. We're at 86.77. It's just kind of stuck. All-time high was up in the 116 area back in 20, uh, December and January of 23 and 22. And it's pulled back. So, yeah, very XLU. That's the uh, utilities. 
made a fabulous high just recently in the 72 all-time high is up in the uh, I think it was 77 area and it's pulling back and that's the yields but wait a minute let's look at the yields look at the uh, um, the bonds so the bonds are up 830 seconds or 119 and 2630 seconds so they're telling you that um, not looking at the monthly which is just a horrible chart but on the shorter term yields have come down quite a bit right it made a trough F the other day. This is the TBT in the 32s. It's trading right now at 33.42. So it's an attempt. But it is arching over in the weekly chart. And that says, you know, there's a chance that the Fed might not say anything, but you will get uh, lower yields over a period of time. Okay, so I needed to put that in perspective to say, so where are we? What are we doing? And what I want you to say is this, that let's go to the QQQ. The technicals in the QQQ, daily's getting a little overbought. Weekly is holding well. It is a little overbought. But the technicals are very strong and the monthly is strong. I, th I see higher prices to come. All right, leg C in the monthly chart. It should still go to at least a D. I wanted to finish that off in this segment. And in the next segment, I've got questions that I want to answer. And the thing that worries me somewhat here is that the IYT is down sharply. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technicians Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. We're back. So I was saying that the iShares Transportation Average ETF, which had all-time highs back in uh, 2021, 22, in the 20. Uh, so in the uh, 70 area, 70.60 and then 71, uh, tumbled down to 48 in October of 2022 and then ran all the way back up to the most recent high in the 71s, like a double top and a leg D going to a peak D in the uh, monthly chart. Of the so what I'm saying here is that this is such a diverse market that, yes, if you're in the Costco's, um, going to all-time highs as we speak, if you're looking at the Walmarts, Going to uh, all all time high right here. There's your leg D again, another one. There's an E in the weekly chart. Everything looks great. Then I would just say you've got to stay with the winners. This is exactly the phase where the uh, the sector that leads or the sectors that lead. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes it's two or three. Is Kind of where you want to be, that's where the majority part of your percentage of, of money needs to be. And then the others are kind of either under the radar or something that's really um, going to benefit in its own way. But you've got to be prepared that if the money flow doesn't go into your area, then those those stocks are lagging. I mean, for instance, you would think with crude oil going higher like this rig. Uh, would be doing very well. Well, today it's up 10 cents, but it's it's got, come down from the 650 area, 640 area, down to the fives, 520. It's just not showing the kind of strength that you would expect. So I, I'm just saying, for instance, for my our portfolio for subscribers, are we just going to stay with this AI, with the uh, uh, the uh, the areas that are working that we are in? Uh, here's another one, for instance, XLF. The financials, a good candle yesterday, a decent candle today, up eight cents. KRE, which is the regional bank, uh, is is um, S and P, a regional banking ETF, is doing quite nicely today. But well, look at it; it's really about to test the lows. So this is a very specialized market, a market that says, um, <clears throat> being in the right area. You do nothing, just sit there and say, wow. I mean, we got you in the, in the Tiger YouTube. Uh, who said wowza? Uh, Rochelle, SMCI. SMCI, this is, uh, we got trading at uh, up 47 and 935, round number 935. Um, made a peak D back in, in March, had a round number 1229, all time high, zero, zero, round number high. Tumbles down to the 700 area. I would call that a pretty decent pullback. Around number 700, he ran up to a peak D pullback sharply. That was at about 970, 960s. Comes down to the 750s. And now it's trading the very strong candle. And that's what I'm saying. These, The relentless buying at some point does change. It will change. But at this point, don't fight it. That's the whole thing. So what I say to subscribers, we're going to wait for certain things. We will add, we'll go to the, well, we are still short the Dow from the exact high, but that's different. But we will, add, we will look at the short side if certain things happen. We might have to buy when the, the, the sectors that we are thinking are going to become vulnerable start to pull back sharply. So miss the exact turn. Maybe we'll try for the game for the exact turn. It's very difficult. But have to keep stops really tight because if you're right, you just more than make up the silly little losses that, you, that that can add up, but it's very difficult once it turns around. Let's just let's go to uh, let's go to the SMH. So the SMH trading right now up another four dollars. Uh, so it took out the last five days of all time highs and made another all time high. Right. So wait a minute. It turns down. What would you consider to be a sharp turn down? That is really a change of trend. Filling the gap from the uh, 11th, where the price was a high of 255.89, to the next session, which is the 12th, with a low 
of 259.76. Uh, would that be a turn? No, that's just putting a, a tiny little gap. Look at the weekly charts, nothing. You'd have to consider a pullback that is holding with the weekly chart making lower lows and lower highs and trading. Yeah, we are at 276. We don't even know where the turnaround will be. But if it does, you would have to think 255, 253, 20 points down is only 10%. And then you've got the potential for a daily sell signal, maybe. And then you have, you have to still wait for a sell mode. Then you have to wait for the weekly for a sell signal. So all I can say is identifying the exact turnaround now because the best opportunities where there was a bit of a pullback that was like at end of May for a couple of days, and, and that was, that's was that been relentless to the upside. So as I say, it's going to have to be a technical thing. What it is, we just don't know as of this moment. So a question came in about NEO, which is, uh, this is in the uh, EV sector, a Chinese company. NEO is trading at 4.41, down 3 cents. Nice candle yesterday. I agree it was a nice candle, but I'm just saying to you, I'd be really careful in this sector. I don't think it's a sector that I'd want to touch right now. Look at Tesla. Tesla, this is there's something completely different to Tesla because it has Elon Musk. It has board of direct just has a whole bunch of things that are going towards its trading band which is a slightly wider trading band but i've been saying i think it's stuck and the majority of trading will be in the 181 to 171 area over the next couple of weeks that's the way i'm looking at it so i just be real careful and look at general motors we spoke about general motors it's doing quite nicely now i was thinking seriously about for subscribers Starting a position in General Motors. It's a position I would actually like to say I want to buy it. It would have been a, two days ago in the 46th area. Now it's at 40 in the 47th. But I would have said I want to start the position. I like it because it's only a leg A in the monthly chart. And I think that this has a chance in the monthly chart to go to at least a C. I don't know about D, but I think it's there's a chance in the monthly. So to start a position here in the 46 is now to 47, 12. It doesn't matter. Within a point, it doesn't matter. But I would have to have three entry points. And that third one is at greatest risk because I would want one here. And if it goes higher, I just have to deal with it. I might have to add and skip one of them. But the, the idea would be to start something here in the 46s. And this is in an area that, I don't know about you, but I see sales of automobiles especially sedans um are rife i mean they, 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 yeah, there seem to be bargains out there which is unusual now that might not be hybrid hybrid might be something completely different but at the same time general motors started an entry here at 46 the next one would be at about 44 and then just a crazy one at the 200 period moving average of 300 is there where do you put your stock if you're let's just say you're wrong that's that's kind of quite a hit. So that's why I'm saying it's just a kind of difficult right now. I'll be back. That was a voice. So be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter. 
Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so I just want you to finish up that, uh, I've got Dell on the screen right now, I just want you to see, it was mentioned, that uh, YouTube Dell's uh, doing well, yes, doing very nicely, up 10 at 152, up 7%. Wow, do you know that this was trading at 180 just the other day? I don't know if it was a round number. I don't think it was. I think it just missed it. Uh, one, 179.70 uh, uh, on the uh, 29th of May, and then it came, it gapped down. The next day, it was a red candle with a lower high, and then it gapped down, and now it's trying to fill that gap. Now, I remember Dell, uh, Michael Dell, I always thought of him as a very interesting guy, kind of modest guy, because... Um, I remember when we all had Dell, you know, desktops and laptops and all that. I love Dell. But, um, and then it kind of disappeared for a long time, and now Dell's back. But at the same time, this gap is very interesting. How it's going to fill it is, is quite something. But look at the power that it's got right now. So let me just go back to the G GM to say, I would probably try to have as much patience as I could. This is a sector, if you look at Ford, uh, struggling, uh, Toyota Motors, struggling, making lower lows, made that peak D in the weekly chart, peak D in the monthly chart, just, I'd, I'd hold off. But I think GM is the one that's going to do really well this year. But I, I would hold off, and I'm saying to subscribers, we keep keeping an eye on it. And GE, General Electric, holding near the all-time highs, is doing very nicely. It's up 85 cents at 164.11. Great company. It wasn't, and now it is. Um, and it could just be through attrition, the way the, the, uh, the CEO is handling everything. But the chart is it's doing everything right, aircraft engines. This is called now General Electric Company, but I think it's called General Electric Aero. It's the air, air, airline division. Anyway, uh, engine that is. So, um, yeah, doing very nicely. But it is starting to make low lows and lower highs in a very in the in the falling axe context here in the weekly chart. So I'm watching it, and look at the Syntas. These are all key metrics that I look at. General Electric, Syntas for the overalls, uniforms, at an all-time high as we speak. Yep, 708.67. Uh, URI, which is the uh, United Rentals, uh, that was at an all-time high uh, a little while ago, earlier in March, making lower lows and high highs. Still holding really well. It's telling me that things are wearing out a little bit there uh, for the rentals. And wall, uh, WM is waste management, one of the last to have a problem if there's any kind of recession. And it's holding well, but it is making lower lows and lower highs. Okay, so now let me do this. A question came in yesterday that I didn't see until afterwards, which is Mobileye. So if I remember correctly, Mobileye, I thought it was taken over by Intel or CyberArk or, Cy or one of those companies. Um, but anyway, as I see it right now, um, 
I'm, I don't like this Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down pattern. And it just says, I would not be buying Mobileye. Would I be shorting it at 26.25? If you asked me, if I saw this yesterday, I would have said, if the nine period moving average just crosses negative, then I very much see the 25 low that was made right and retested the May the 31st, 2579, then retested at 25. No, that couldn't have been. That could have been, must, must be 2501. And then tested at 2505. A few days later, I can see it hitting that level. Would I short it? That would be my target. Okay. Uh, and then I, if it takes that out, it goes even lower. So this is a very weak stock. I don't know if that's what you were asking, but that's what I did. Um, the other one was, uh, I did Neo. I did, oh, uh, TGB. So Taseko Mines. I remember I was warning about Taseko earlier. I said it's been fantastic, but it looks to me like it's starting to make lower highs and lower lows. That's kind of a trend change. Nice two days today. It's up uh, three cents at 2.53 to sake of mines, TGB. Um, 2.53, it was down to the 2.24 area, I think. Well, yeah, 2.24 on the 13th of June. Hey, percentage rise, this is a nice bounce. But the weekly chart says Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down. Be a little careful here. I, I suspect that the 258 to 261 area is going to be strong resistance. And if you're looking at high grade copper, look at this. Hiker Copper is just making lower lows and lower highs. It did the one-to-one -one expansion to the bottom. It's, it's actually exceeded that, and that's a peak D, and there again is that Eiffel Tower. So, oh, Settle Strike. Oh, that's right. There was something about the strike. Yeah, maybe that's just the resolution, but you still have to look at the copper price. So that could be maybe uh, maybe it is having some kind of uh, a relief rally. But I just think it's it's still digesting gains. I just say be careful. The close under 2.20 2 says the whole area of two, two teens, 2.15 yeah, or so, has to be good support. That's that there. And the next thing, oh, so the other thing is the TLT. Yeah, uh, would you buy the TLT or would you short the TLT? You know, I'm impressed with the way that the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone has become a, a propellant zone. And that's just saying that the TLT is rallying and it's above the 200p moving average in the daily, but the weekly chart, this week for the first time, I'm looking at an L. So it's a weekly chart and we aren't even one, uh, two days into the week and we've got a day off. So I'm just going to say I like the action right now in the short term that's saying yields if there's going to be a surprise, does it come from yields? I don't know yet. All I can say is that the yields are pulling back, and that's really important. So let me do this. It was the exact opposite. You remember that was resistance, and it took out it, it took out the support. Now it's resistance, and for the first time in a little while, the S has returned. That means sell the uh, 914 of the weekly chart. That's got nothing to do with anything else other than this one indicator. But all the technicals are starting to deteriorate. And that just says, ha, huh, it looks like yields want to come down a little bit. And if they do, and 32 is taken out, it's a 33, 36 in the next week and a half in, in June. If 32 is taken out, there's a chance we could test the 200 period moving average of 29.84. But I actually think that it's just kind of stuck in a range. I've been speaking about that forever, saying yields are really in a, in a range. They're range bound. And as a result, um, I don't see any really big action in the yields to say that's a, that becomes a market changer just yet. So um, let's just see. Every 18 day, today's one of those days. Red candle. Oh, Dave in New York. That's very interesting. Dave says, every pullback in QQQ has been a factor of nine. That's nine times five, nine times four, nine times two, etc. As the market trends higher, each pullback becomes quicker until the market resets. And I, I love that thinking because that to me is the way my mind thinks of those cycles. You know, for instance, when you're thinking of the speed of technology, the speed, those themselves become a big cy a cycle. So the tiny cycle becomes part of an even bigger cycle. Uh, it's hard, it, I got it visually in my mind, not easy to explain. So uh, each ball becomes quicker until the market resets. Right. In addition, you'll find that every 18 days, ha, huh, 
there is a pivot high, sometimes small, sometimes big. The double of that cycle, 17 to 18, are usually smaller pivots. Today is one of those days, red candle. Red, can red candle at night is a sailor's delight. Coming back for the final segment, and um, I needed to tell you that again, the IAI, that's the, come on, that's the IAI, that's the broker dealer ETF, is not, it, it's holding, but it's not giving us a sense of the real market breakout to the outside yet. And I think it needs that. I'll be back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, so it's awesome if I would appear on your show, the Dow Diamonds. I always show the Dow, and I, every day I show the Dow Diamonds for the daily chart. But this is the weekly. Look, made a peak, D. Uh, that is still um, that was an artificial A right there, but now it's an official A. So this is a peak D, at, uh, four, and it made a 401.00 round number all-time high uh, on the 16th of May. So this is consolidating sideways. The longer the t longer time you take, the greater the chances are you should pull back and test the low, the base. In this case, the base would be uh, the base of 376.14 that was made back in April. So that's that. That's that. And that just means that you're using up time at this particular point. Um, the question came in about, uh, oh, great, uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin I've had in a, in a sell signal, and I'm about to upgrade in the daily to a sell mode. Retail charge still just going sideways. But I believe that this is uh, consolidating 
uh, huge gains, a double top in the weekly chart, and now we're forming the cup formation and cup and handle. This is the handle formation that's being formed. So uh, uh, Bitcoin is consolidating. Just real quickly, the VIX index, look at this, VIX index is down eight cents at 12.67. I'm gonna make a big deal about this. If the volatility index any time in the next week starts to trade and holds on a closing basis above 14.80, getting close to the 15 area, that's where, I, but it has to do that really, it has to do it for two days. You can't do one day pop up and then fail. If for two days you've got a really strong volatility index, the market will finally take a breather. It'll be the breather that we're looking for, but I'm only calling it right now breather, even though there are signs that if the semiconductors really take a bit of a hit on the daily charts, it could be quite quick and quite severe. But let's just wait to get there. You have to have patience. So with that said, uh, it's a, not just a split market, but even within the split, it's a split. So in the right sectors, hold tight, just enjoy it, appreciate it, and take a little bit off for money management. I'll be back with Tom later on this afternoon. Have a great day.